Hello, welcome to the second part of the drum recording workshop at Studio 301 Cologne. Enjoy. First of all, here's a little bit about microphone theory. Pressure microphones are always omnidirectional. Pressure gradient microphones are always directional, with various polar patterns such as cardioid, wide cardioid, supercardioid, hypercardioid, lobe or figure 8. This is an AKG D112 microphone. The sound coming from the front arrives at the diaphragm first and then gets forwarded to the backside of the microphone by an internal acoustic delay element. This procedure creates erasures and phase displacements and therefore the microphone now has got the polar pattern cardioid. Sounds coming from the off axis, that means from the cardioid mics, at 180 degrees do not create output voltage. Here is the Neumann TLM170i. This pressure gradient microphone can switch between different polar patterns, which is realized through the switching between the polarities of the two cardioids, the so-called double diaphragm. Pressure gradient microphones have a lifting of low frequencies in the close-up range, which is called the proximity effect. The smaller the distance between the microphone and the sound source, the bigger the curve of the acoustic wave is, and as a result the pressure gradient increases. This in turn means that the pressure difference between the front diaphragm and back diaphragm and their oscillation increases, which leads to an increasing in the induced voltage at the output. This effect is often desired for the recording of speech or toms. Condenser microphones need 48 volt phantom power, which is supplied by the microphone cable. Tube microphones often need an external power supply for high voltage and old microphones sometimes need 12 volt. Furthermore, there are electric condenser microphones which hold a frozen voltage on the condenser discs, which only need a 1.5 volt battery for the feed-in of the internal microphone preamp, and they are often used for outdoor recordings because of their low consumption of electricity. Another dynamic microphone type is the ribbon microphone. This ribbon is open to both sides, so the sound will be recorded from the front and from the back. The result is a microphone with a polar pattern figure 8. Sound from the front, sound from the back, and diaphragm oscillation. When the sound comes from the side, the sound pressure of both sides is the same, which means that there is no oscillation and therefore no voltage will be induced. This is called the figure 8. All right, these are a few hints for you. A drum kit can create sound pressure levels up to 145 dB SPL, which means that you have to take care of your microphones, because otherwise you risk destroying them. Only use microphones that can at least deal with that sound pressure level. Condenser microphones sometimes have a pad switch to avoid overdriving the mic preamp. If the diaphragm oscillation works, but the internal microphone preamp overdrives, switch pad on. Often you'll find a low-cut switch as well. While recording hi-hats, right cymbals and overheads, you don't need the low frequencies or the sub-bass. To discharge the mic preamp, just switch the low-cut for these instruments to on. The different parts of a drum kit are very loud and in close proximity to each other. This causes a lot of crosstalk on the different microphones. It might help working with the natural off-axis of the microphones to avoid or lower the crosstalk. Remember, the off-axis of the cardioid is 180 degrees, hyper and super cardioid at approximately 120 and 240 degrees, and figure 8 at 90 and 270 degrees. We'll have a closer look at that later on when we set up the microphones. We have prepared the different microphones for the recording of the bass drum. These are the two bass drum microphones, an AKG D112 and a Neumann TLM170i. The AKG D112 is a typical bass drum microphone. The green side is the front side and the black side is the 180 degrees off axis. It's a dynamic moving coil and pressure gradient microphone with a polar pattern cardioid. The D112 has a maximum sound pressure level of 160 dB SPL and a frequency range of 20 Hz to 17 kHz. At 4 kHz, this microphone has an automatic narrowband mid-boost, which is very good for the assertiveness of the bass drum in the mix. The D112 is perfect for the recording of the bass drum, e-bass, tuba, trombone or other instruments with a high sound pressure level. Here we have the big diaphragm condenser microphone by Neumann, the TLM170i. 
It's a pressure gradient microphone as well and has switchable polar patterns which can be adjusted at the back side of the mic. Omnidirectional, cardioid, wide cardioid, hypercardioid and figure 8. The TLM170i has a frequency range of 40 Hz up to 18 kHz, a minus 10 dB pad switch and 150 dB SPL maximum sound pressure level at 0.5 THD. It needs phantom power as it is a condenser mic and it is also very suitable for vocals and so on. All right, next up is a snare drum. We've got two microphones for the snare drum to show you. Once again, one dynamic and one condenser microphone. The dynamic microphone is the Shure SM57 and the condenser microphone is an AKG C414. Let's take a closer look at them. The Shure SM57 was first published in 1965 and is a dynamic moving coil pressure gradient microphone with the polar pattern Cardioid. It has a frequency range of 40 Hz up to 15 kHz, 180 degrees off axis and a very high maximum sound pressure level. The SM57 is very solid and therefore very suitable for snare drum, electric guitars, the brass section, congas and other instruments with a high maximum sound pressure level. It's often used for live situation as well, because it creates very little feedback. This is the AKG C414 condenser microphone. It was released in many different versions like this, AKG C414 BULS. The C414 is a big diaphragm condenser microphone with a double diaphragm. You can choose between four different polar patterns, omnidirectional, cardioid, hypercardioid and figure 8. It has a frequency range of 20 Hz up to 20 kHz and 140 dB SPL maximum sound pressure level at 0.5% THD, with pad on even 160 dB SPL. You can also switch on a low cut filter at either 75 Hz or 150 Hz with 12 dB per octave rate of change. This microphone needs phantom power as well and is suitable for snare drums, electric guitars, solo instruments of any kind and also for vocals. Let's go on to the toms. These are two microphones for the toms two Sennheisers, MD421. They are dynamic moving coil microphones with the polar pattern Cardioid and the frequency range of 30 Hz to 17 kHz. This is the front side. These microphones have 200 ohm impedance and an off-axis of 180 degrees again. It was first released in the 60s and is a classic microphone, very suitable for toms. I often use it for guitars as well and they are available with different connectors. This one has a Tuchel connector for example but is also available with XLR connector. Furthermore, there's a five-step switch for either music or speech to avoid the proximity effect. All right, this is a legendary microphone and very suitable for toms, the brass section and guitars. Let's now take a look at the hi-hat and ride microphones. These are the Neumann KM84. The KM84 is a small diaphragm condenser microphone and also very legendary. It was first released in 1966. Needs 48 volt phantom power and has a frequency range of 40 Hz to 20 kHz. There's also a minus 10 dB pad switch which can be switched on with a pen, for example. The off-axis lies at 180 degrees. It's a very popular microphone for the hi-hat and overheads, but also very suitable for acoustic string instruments, such as acoustic guitars, etc. Today we're using it as a hi-hat and ride microphone. The follower of the KM84 is the Neumann KM184. Let's have a look at that one. It's a small diaphragm condenser microphone with polar pattern cardioid. The KM184 has a frequency range of 20 Hz up to 20 kHz, 140 dB SPL maximum sound pressure level and again 180 degrees off axis. This microphone has a small boost at 9 kHz to add brilliance to the signal, which is the difference between this one and the KM84. It also needs phantom power and is very suitable for overheads, hi-hats, acoustic string instruments and many more. You can also change the capsule. Let me show you that. The amplifier is separate to the capsule, but you have to be careful because it's a very fine pitch thread.
All right, we'll now go on to the two ambient mics by Brühl and Kier. These are the two microphones up here, Brühl and Kier. They also have got an external power supply. These microphones are called Brühl and Kier 4009. And we have set up a small AB stereo pair with two omnidirectionals. You can add a pad to each channel, either minus 6 dB or minus 12 dB. The feed-in is done by this external power supply, and the microphones are perfectly fitted for high-end recordings, such as piano recordings. You could also use these microphones as gorge microphones because of their Lena frequency response. As I already said, those microphones are very good for high-end acoustic recordings. All right, that's it for the microphones. If you want to know how the microphone placement works, definitely check out our next tutorials.